In earlier videos in this course, we've developed all the concepts we need to understand quantum teleportation. Quantum teleportation involves two parties, Alice and Bob. So I'm going to draw uh, Alice. She'll be up in the top half of the screen when I describe the protocol. And Bob is going to be down here uh, near the bottom part of the screen. And uh, Bob, uh, excuse me, Alice starts the protocol uh, with a quantum state which we'll label psi, and it's an arbitrary state of a single qubit. So alpha naught plus beta one is the state. Uh, so that's uh, one of her uh, qubits. And Alice and Bob also start out by sharing between them two uh, qubits in uh, the Bell state that we've uh, met uh, before. So I'll draw this just as a big uh, box. Uh, so this is the, the bell state, um, the state uh, 0, 0, plus 1, 1, the entangled state that we saw in the superdense coding uh, protocol. And so it's a, a two qubit state, as you'll no doubt uh, recall. Um, and uh, what's going on here, of course, you know, if Alice is a long way away from Bob, which is what we're imagining, uh, the bell state um, he, you know, needs somehow to have been uh, prepared earlier uh, on, maybe by a third party, Eve, for example, who prepares the two qubit state, then sends one qubit off to Alice and the other qubit off to Bob. It doesn't really matter how it's been shared between them. Uh, there, are, there are other procedures uh, as well. Um, all that matters is that somehow they've come into possession of this shared uh, entangled uh, state. So this qubit down here is Bob's, this qubit up here is Alice's. So Alice has two qubits in her possession and the next step of the teleportation protocol is uh, for Alice to do a bell basis measurement. Exactly the same measurement that we saw uh, done in the superdense uh, coding uh, protocol. So uh, in particular um, well, actually both these st steps, the bell state preparation and also the bell basis measurement, um, you know, we can fill in the details much as we did for superdense coding, uh, but we don't actually, we're not going to worry too much about uh, that uh, here. Um, okay, so uh, this qubit of Bob's kind of, you know, keeps on going. Um, and after this bell basis measurement has been done, uh, yielding one of four possible outcomes. So this is a partial measurement in the bell basis on Alice's qubits. So yielding one of the, the four different uh, bell basis uh, elements. Um, yet yeah, there is a posterior state uh, for Bob uh, down here. And a crucial step in understanding the teleportation protocol is to figure out exactly what that state is. We'll do that in, in, a, in a bit. So we're going to figure out what this state is as a function of uh, the bell basis measurement outcome. And so the next step of the protocol is for Alice to send over to Bob uh, her measurement result. So this is some classical information which she can send on a classical uh, information uh, channel. It just says, you know, I got bell basis, you know, element number two or number three, whichever of the four it is. Um, so she sends it over to Bob um, and it turns out that what we're going to be able to show is that by B Bob doing the appropriate uh, uh, quantum gate down here, he's going to be able to recover the original state psi. So, but the, the crucial step to figuring this out or to seeing this is to figure out what this uh, posterior state is here before the recovery uh, operation. Um, okay, so let, let's figure out what that, uh, exactly what that state is. So to do that, we're going to start by writing out the joint state of the three qubits at, at the beginning of uh, the protocol. So this state together with the bell state. I'm going to omit all the, um, the ket uh, notation. So here we are. We have the initial state alpha naught plus beta one times the bell state naught naught plus one one. And we can expand that all out as alpha naught 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 plus alpha uh, naught one one plus beta one naught naught plus beta one one one. I'm omitting a factor of uh, root two, of course, um, as we've done before. 
Uh, and to figure out what happens if we do a Bell basis measurement on the first two qubits in this expression, um, we've got to express the state of the first two qubits in the Bell basis, as we saw in the last video. So we need to rewrite things like this naught naught here or this naught one here uh, in terms of the Bell basis elements. Um, so to help us do that, well, let's first of all remember exactly what the Bell basis is. So the first element is naught naught plus one one. Uh, the second element is uh, one naught plus naught one. The third element is uh, naught naught minus one one. And the final element is one naught uh, minus naught one. Okay, so that's the four Bell basis uh, elements or these uh, entangled states. And we wanna rewrite uh, the naught naught, naught one, one naught and one one in, in these terms. So let's do that. Um, again, I'm going, I'm omitting uh, lots of factors of root two here. Um, I'll come back later actually and, and we'll reinsert them. It's not difficult to keep track of what they are, but they're just a little bit annoying. So naught naught is what we get when we add uh, B uh, naught to B two. Again, with a root two factor uh, missing. Uh, naught one, we get B one, uh, minus uh, B3, right? So the, the terms, uh, uh, the one naught cancels out. Uh, one naught, uh, we get uh, by adding the two of them together. So they reinforce each other. And uh, finally, uh, one one, we get by subtracting B2 um, uh, from uh, B naught. Okay, so now we can re-express this using these expressions, we can re-express this state. So we substitute them in on the first uh, two uh, qubits and this state becomes, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's this state here, becomes, um, uh, there's going to be, well, let, let's take a look at the, so we'll pick up B naught term from both uh, naught naught and one one. So we get B naught times uh, alpha zero is the contribution here. And then we get a plus a beta one contribution from this final term. Um, we get a B one. And so uh, we get a contribution uh, both from the naught one and, and the one naught term. So both here and here. So here we get an alpha one. And here we get a plus a beta uh, zero. And uh, we also get a B2 term. Um, so the, the B2 contributions come from the naught naught uh, and from the one one with a, with a minus sign. So we get alpha naught minus beta one now. And finally, the B3 term, uh, we, get, um, uh, we get contributions from the naught one and the one naught with a minus for the, the naught one. So it's minus alpha one uh, plus beta zero. And uh, in fact, uh, you know, I've been omitting all these uh, uh, one over root two factors. It's all times a half if you track uh, everything uh, through. You can, you can go and do the check that if you, if you want to. Uh, it's a useful exercise. In fact, I should perhaps say, um, you know, all we're doing here is a calculation. And in many ways, the best thing to do uh, is to ignore what I'm doing and to go through and do uh, the calculation on your own. That's really probably the most informative way of doing this, or at least attempt the calculation on your own. Once you've done that, you can come back and look at what I'm doing uh, and uh, you'll understand it quite a bit better. Anyway, let's keep going. So this is the state expressed in terms of the Bell basis on the first two qubits. Uh, and we can see from this that if we do that partial measurement, the Bell basis measurement that we were talking about before, well, uh, the probability um, uh, for each um, of the four outcomes so is actually the same and it's it doesn't matter uh, which of the four uh, bell basis measurements you get it's actually just one half squared which is a quarter uh, times well uh, and uh, you know, this is um, uh, in fact, a, a properly normalized a quantum state already. So it's, they're each just a quarter. And the posterior states um, corresponding to the four measurement outcomes are just alpha naught plus beta one, which is already a normalized quantum state. Uh, psi, alpha one, 
uh, plus beta zero for this guy, which is um, it's just the not gate acting on psi. I'm omitting the ket notation again. Uh, for the B2, it's alpha naught minus beta one, which is the Z gate acting on psi. And in the final case, it's uh, minus alpha one plus beta naught, uh, which is just uh, what happens when you apply the not gate followed by the Z gate acting on uh, psi. So these are the four um, uh, you know, posterior states corresponding to the four possible measurement outcomes. So once Bob knows which of these four measurement outcomes uh, he has, uh, he knows uh, the corresponding uh, quantum state. It's just one of these four um, uh, uh, quantum states and he can apply or he can recover the original quantum state psi just by applying the in appropriate inverse operation. So in this case if he gets uh, this state, the x psi, he can actually apply x inverse, which of course is x itself, to recover the original state psi, and similarly here uh, and here for the other two Bell basis measurement outcomes. Okay, so that completes our analysis of quantum teleportation. Uh, just to sum up uh, the whole uh, protocol, um, we have Alice, who has a state psi, as well as sharing half of a Bell state with Bob and uh, the way the all Alice does with that is she does a Bell basis uh, measurement and uh, she sends her measurement result, the classical measurement result over a classical communication channel off to Bob who depending on which of the four measurement outcomes happens, applies a recovery. So the recovery operations are the identity operation doing nothing, the NOT gate, uh, the Z gate, and uh, XZ will recover from those four things, four actions I described before. And at the end of the day, uh, Bob will be in possession of the state Psi. So that concludes our discussion of the basic uh, quantum teleportation protocol. We can see why it is that Alice can transmit a state Psi over to Bob using nothing but classical communication uh, and this shared Bell state uh, resource. In the next um, video, what we're going to do, once now that we've understood the basic uh, discussion, is uh, we're going to discuss uh, some uh, interesting aspects and sometimes rather subtle aspects of the quantum teleportation protocol just to deepen our understanding uh, a little bit of what, what exactly is going on.